with the chair of the Health and Social Care Committee, Jeremy Hunt, uh, former Health Secretary, of course. So let's just get that out of the way to start with, Mr Hunt. Good morning to you. Um, been a problem for 15 years, um, says the nurse, uh, which, I mean, to what extent do you accept some responsibility for that, given that you were previously Health Secretary? Well, of course, I have to accept some responsibility, but I did set up six new medical schools uh, and increase the number of doctors we train by 25%. The problem is, because it takes seven years to train a doctor, we won't get any of those additional doctors through until 2024. And this is really the point we're making in our report, that we need to have a system that's much more robust, that doesn't depend on individual health secretaries or chancellors taking decisions, but gives the NHS confidence that whoever the government is, whoever the health secretary is, we will always be training enough doctors and nurses for the future. And at the moment, uh, we think we're about 12,000 hospital doctors short, about 50,000 nurses short. And that is creating massive pressure on frontline staff. And we are very frustrated in the committee that despite having talked about this now for a couple of years, we still don't have a proper NHS workforce plan in place, nor do we have one in place for the social care sector, as you were just talking about with Professor Mortensen. Yeah. Um, how close do you think the government is going to be to uh, recruiting the 6,000 GPs that it promised in the manifesto? Well, it's, it's not easy recruiting extra GPs, but uh, since they made that promise in the 2019 manifesto, which I obviously stood on as a Conservative as well, uh, we've gone down by about 700 GPs. Uh, a year ago, we said we needed 2,000 more midwives. We've gone down 500 midwives. And I think people in the NHS know there's no silver bullet. They know it takes three years to train a midwife, seven years to train a doctor, 10 years to train a GP. There's no easy solutions. But what they want is a really solid plan in place so that you know young people entering the profession today can at least have some hope that the pressure isn't always going to be like it is today. You've been warning, I know, about the crisis, the workforce crisis, for um, a long time. We've spoken about it often on this programme. Um, you are backing Rishi Sunak, um, who didn't... I think I'm right in saying, you'll correct me, um, who didn't vote for your amendment in Parliament to produce a workforce plan. And he's not really said that much so far about the workforce when it comes to talking about the NHS, either in hustings or on TV debates. Does he get it? Well, I think I do give him credit that of the two candidates, he's the first who's actually spoken about the NHS. And he's, he's used the word emergency. And I think that's very important because that's what it feels like on the front line at the moment. That's what it feels like, I think, for some of the people who are waiting for their NHS care. Um, but the reason I'm supporting is because I, the reason I'm a Conservative is because I think only Conservative governments take the tough and difficult long term decisions that the country needs. And he was prepared to say publicly that we can't afford unfunded tax cuts. And I thought that was very brave. And I want someone who, who leads us, who tells us things that we don't always want to hear. That's what I think we should have from a prime minister. And I hope we would have that when it comes to some difficult decisions respecting the NHS as well. Yeah, you said a, a crisis. He's referred to it as a crisis. He's also talked to, about us having to be on a war for thing to deal with it. But to... To fight a war, you need to have uh, troops, don't you? Um, and as you said, it's taking a while for those troops to come along to the front line. Should we be looking overseas to bring in reinforcements? Yes, there's lots of things we can do in the short term. In the long run, of course, we should be training all the doctors and nurses we need. We're one of the biggest healthcare systems in the world. Um, but, you know, in the short term, if you've got a doctor coming from a country like Germany or Canada... Why on earth do they need to go through endless uh, checks as to their medical qualifications when we know they're coming from a system where there's very good medical training? So we could definitely speed things up when it comes to relieving the pressure in the short term. You, you did talk, you promised, uh, certainly part of a government that promised um, uh, a net migration target, I think under David Cameron, wasn't it? Uh, it didn't happen. Uh, why is Rishi Sunak it appears to be doing the same thing with his proposed um, asylum cap. Is that what he's doing? I think it's slightly different. <clears throat> I think what he's saying is that um, in a world where uh, people are much, much more mobile than they've ever been, we've got to recognise that there needs to be different structures if we're going to fulfil our humanitarian responsibilities. And we need to play our bit. Other countries need to play their bit. And uh, so we need to... Be honest about the fact that there's a limited amount that any one country can do 
but at the same time staying true to Britain's historical generosity to people in difficulty coming from other countries. How humane is it to send vulnerable people to Rwanda, though? Well, I think the world has changed. And we used to be in a world where it was relatively difficult to go across continents and across oceans to get to the UK. So people who came here would claim asylum um, when they got here. But now that process has become much easier. And if we don't find a different way of helping them, which doesn't encourage the people smugglers, then we are just going to nurture a really horrible industry that treats those people really badly. So what we need, I think, is to have much better, safe, legal routes for people to get here, but clamp down on the people smugglers, the people who are traffic trafficking people in small boats across the channel, and all the evils that that involves. Uh, completely understood, but we did have a human rights barrister on the programme just last week and he was saying that he would be surprised if even one person was sent to Rwanda because every time the government tries to do that, they will face a legal challenge and they will lose in the courts. Yes, and that's why I think it's very difficult to get this right, but I think the truth is that the status quo is not sustainable and what we're, in, what we're risking at the moment is uh, building up a massive people smuggling industry uh, and that cannot be the right way to help people who are vulnerable. So what we need is better, safe, legal routes to help people in refugee camps on the border of Syria or the, coming out of Afghanistan, help them get here safely, legally, uh, discharge our responsibilities to be a compassionate, humane country, but not nurture this, this horrible people smuggling business. What about the suggestion of floating asylum centres, uh, which has been uh, suggested by your candidate? Is that a good idea? We're getting quite a long way away from my Health and Social Care Select Committee report. Yeah, but you're, you know, you are, okay. you know, you, you uh, have previously I'm been Foreign Secretary, forward, and uh, yeah. you, as I know from having spoken to you previously, you can turn your hand to anything. Well, that's very generous of you to say so. But um, I mean, look. The truth is we have to be radical, we have to do things differently, um, and we have to be courageous. And Rishi Sunak, to me, has shown that he's willing to be courageous, in particular uh, being up front to Conservative Party members, of whom I'm one, who all, to a person, want tax cuts and say that say that's not possible at the moment. We can't afford that right now. Uh, and I think that's the kind of courage uh, that has persuaded me that he's the right man to be Prime Minister. But the same courage and decisiveness is necessary, yes, when it comes to asylum policy, refugee policy as well. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to move into the Foreign Secretary role again, obviously these are the sort of questions that people will want to know the answers to when your man wins or doesn't. He's losing at the moment, isn't he? Well, um, I think there's all to play for. At this stage um, in the previous leadership campaign, I was uh, a long way behind Boris Johnson, but I think the difference between this time and last time is that then, because of Brexit, a lot of Conservative Party members had firmly made up their mind. This time, the poll shows that a lot of people are still making up their minds. They haven't made their final decision. Uh, maybe they wanted some of the other candidates in the race who are not now part of the race. And so I think there's all to play for. 10,000 Tory voters want Boris Johnson back. Yes, but that, that may be true. I haven't seen that exact number, but there are 175,000 members and... You know, a decision's been taken and we do now need to move forward. And I think we've got two excellent candidates, uh, both very experienced in government, uh, both done their cabinet jobs extremely well. And so I think it's a very good choice for the Conservative Party membership to have. And um, what is it about Rishi Sunak and the National Health Service that makes you think that he is a better person to try to... Uh, steer us away from up to 14 million people on the waiting list by the time of the next general election? Well, his main involvement as Chancellor has been to make sure that the NHS gets the funding that it needs. And he did that through the extra £12 billion a year, through the health and social care levy, which again was a, a very difficult decision to take. But what, what we're arguing in this report, and what I, I hope you would understand as Prime Minister, is that it's not just about money. You can put 12 billion a year or 10 billion a year, as it actually will end up being, into the NHS. But if you haven't got 10 billion quid's worth of extra doctors and nurses, if you haven't got the capacity in the system, you won't get the extra operations that you need. And so that's what we're saying needs to happen now, a very thorough workforce plan. 
that answers a very simple question that's on the minds of, of every doctor and nurse in the NHS. How many extra doctors and nurses are we going to need in the next five years and 10 years? And do we have a plan in place to recruit them? Just before I let you go, this is uh, not about the health service, but it's something that you know an awful lot about, I'm sure, um, given um, your good lady at home. Confucius Institutes are something that we're hearing quite a lot about. Um, moving on to China, of course, they are something that are based in our, um, in our universities here. What are they and why are we so worried about them? Well, um, they were set up uh, with funding from the Chinese government in universities in this country and indeed around the world to promote Chinese culture, Chinese language. Um, but unfortunately, they've also been used uh, to further Chinese state aims and pushing the objectives of the Chinese Communist Party in a way that I think is very inconsistent with academic freedom. So I think Rishi Sunak is right to call that out this morning and say that, you know, our universities need to be welcoming to students from all over the world, including, of course, China, but they need to be places where academic freedom is totally respected. There's full freedom of speech. People who want to say things that may upset the regime in China are completely free to do so. Um, and Kay, you've said one last thing to me. I want to say one last thing to you. I'm very sorry that the last time we met, I nearly knocked you over on my bicycle. And, uh, <laughs> here is my very public apology for that in front of all the Sky viewers this morning. <laughs> I think you might have tried to do it on purpose, but I'll let you off. I'm sure you didn't. It's great to see you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning, Mr Hunt. Thank you.